Buongiorno. Good evening. Good evening and uh, uh, welcome to this meeting, Talents and Human Capital. Uh, we have already been talking in the meeting uh, with uh, entrepreneurs and uh, we've been talking about uh, businesses. Showing that uh, Italy finds it hard to develop, uh, but still uh, is varied. That's because there are many successful uh, um, businesses, entrepreneurs, and especially we want to focus on enterprises uh, focusing on human capital and talents. Uh, this aspect was somewhat neglected a few years ago, whereas uh, today it uh, is very important. There are two types of uh, businesses here, two types of enterprises. One is Italian, in excellence in the world. I was talking to Neri Alessandri, who is the uh, uh, chairman and CEO of Technogym. Thank you very much for being here with us. I'm struck when I go to the U.S. that uh, there is uh, uh, advertising of uh, 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 Technogym. Uh, I, I see many ads about Technogym and they think that it's an American uh, uh, business. But actually it's Italian. And uh, that shows its success. And also uh, they focus on people. And then there is uh, another type of business which you all know and it's uh, Sky, Sky Italia. Uh, which uh, uh, works on high quality television. All those who like a different type of uh, television watch it. And we have with us uh, Mr. Andrea Zappia, who is the CEO for Sky Italia. Now, the first question, which is going to be very informal, is uh, what is it for you to uh, uh, focus on people inside your companies? Al volo. Quindi comincia. So, We'll first hear from Neri Alessandri. Good evening, everyone. Thank you very much for inviting me here. It is a pleasure to be here with you tonight. Now, the topic of human capital is the most important uh, topic for a company. Uh, you can uh, take everything away from us, but not people, because it's people that can make a difference. And an enterprise can win on the international market only if uh, it has good people, motivated, skillful people, and believing in what they do. So the topic is about talent. Are we born as talents, or can you become a talent? This is a question. This is the debate. I have my own personal idea, as in you can become a talent. But there must be some prerequisites, some uh, conditions behind it. And if you train, if you train yourself, you can constantly improve. And this is what I'm doing. I'm a trainer myself. And this implies sharing a dream with your team a project which is uh, based on a vision, as in what? We want to be the wellness. We want to be the wellness company, the wellness revolution provider, as in we want to sell. We want to promote uh, solutions to the uh, uh, well-being of life and for the improvement, improvement of uh, um, uh, human life. And uh, our company wants to share why and uh, wants to uh, explain why, why it wants to be involved in a project. And uh, the answer to the why is the raison d'etre of our existence, as in uh, we want to be useful to uh, uh, our customers and to the world. Why? Because we want to help the world to be uh, uh, more beautiful uh, uh, by uh, improving people's health. Healthy people, healthy planet. This is our motto. So commitment, passion, these are the key words. When I was 22, we were in a small uh, uh, garage and I was uh, hiring the first people and they were asking me, who should I talk to? <laughs> should I talk to your father? No, you have to talk to me, I used to tell them. So I was a bit young at that time and I went, I went to the bank. Uh, I used to go to the bank uh, um, to uh, uh, have some uh, uh, money 
uh, to have some money to invest and the two discount invoices and uh, people were strangely looking at me when I was at the bank. Why? Because I had a dream. I had a dream and uh, my dream was uh, uh, to uh, uh, do something that uh, could uh, uh, be uh, recalled, remember, in the world, a product. The first uh, uh, gym machinery, machinery tool, was uh, designed, was produced uh, uh, in a garage, and uh, people uh, in a small gym in, in Cesena uh, liked it, happened to like it. At that time, I had a very modest family, and I had another job, so uh, I was... Um, uh, working elsewhere and uh, I uh, used to work in this field uh, uh, just as a hobby and um, after a while uh, I uh, started doing it full time although people believe I was crazy my dream was to set the world in motion again the man is, was, is born to walk 30 kilometers a day this is our ancestors did to uh, uh, get food, uh, to cultivate land, uh, to uh, uh, move from one village to another. And today we walk uh, less than two kilometers a day. Hence, uh, you need the techno gym, as in to uh, fill the gap uh, of the 28 kilometers that we don't walk every day. Today, child obesity and all the diseases uh, uh, ensuing from... Uh, um, uh, unhealthy living conditions, uh, as in stress, alcohol, smoke, uh, uh, prevent uh, social economic development. So this is why it is important to focus on talent. And you can become a talent, but you have to train for that. I'll give you, um, uh, I'll tell you my story. I, I'll tell you about my experience. I couldn't do anything. I was 22. Uh, uh, I, uh, my my uh, parents were uh, uh, blue collars. I couldn't discount an invoice. I didn't know what an invoice was. I didn't have a phone in my house. I had to go outside to make phone calls because in my area, uh, it was like this, but... By, by training, I could do something. Training means uh, not taking anything for granted. Mean, it means being greedy, being uh, thirsty, being uh, uh, thirsty for knowledge, uh, thirsty for experience. And uh, I transferred my knowledge and my skills to others, to my co-workers. And you can become a talent. If I think about my first 10 co-workers, one was, my, was a neighbor of mine, a second one was my cousin, uh, the other one used to live opposite where I lived, uh, the other one was a friend of mine, and they're still there in the company, and we're worldwide leaders. Uh, we've been the official providers for five editions to the Olympic Games, we'll be in the Olympic Games in Rio in 2016. Uh, we sold uh, uh, the beer to the Germans, so to speak. But uh, we did that, all of that, with ordinary people. That's because they, and we were able to do that because they believed in that. And uh, because uh, uh, we tried to make the company as transparent as possible, we focused on training, we uh, have focused on communications, and we shared the missions, the values, the goals uh, uh, of the company. We set the bar uh, uh, always higher as athletes are used to doing in the Olympic Games in order to have increasingly challenging targets. And to do that, you need to train. You train to do that. You train to become talents, which means learning, exploring. I've just written a book, uh, Nati per muoverci, uh, born to move, not just with the legs, but especially born to move with our heart and with our mind. So you can do it. Yes, we can. And this world, this country, needs you because uh, what, I, uh, what I tell you to do is uh, let's dream, let's continue to dream just like after our ancestors, after the, the world war, because uh, we can uh, do uh, the best products ever and we can sell them throughout the world and this can be done through the people. People are the key for success. Uh, so, good afternoon.
first of all, uh, I'm very happy to come back to the Rimini meeting. I, well, I had the pleasure of being, you, of being with you last year and to meet some talents. Uh, talking about talents after Nero is quite complicated because he's already expressed so many interesting concepts of such a passion and he himself, himself is such a great talent because he built an international success starting from scratch. Many of the things that he mentioned is exactly uh, exactly tell us that uh, these concepts apply both to a company um, like Technogym, uh, uh, but they can apply also, for example, to a leading company in the United States or to Germany, as well as to a company very different from Technogym, starting from an international uh, uh, company settling in Italy as a thoroughly Italian company and fully sharing the principles of Technogym. What struck me most of his contribution is the reason of his uh, development. And this is very dear to me, especially to me as well, which is the purpose of what we do, the purpose of a company. Ultimately, what motivates us most is the uh, primary responsibility, the primary accountability of the company towards those who work in the company itself. And this responsibility lies in giving in providing a purpose for what they do. And I think this is even stronger than any training, than any form of training we can provide to the people who work with us. If we know why we are in a company, what we want to achieve, what the company really wants to do, then each and any one of us can contribute to his best, to his or her best, and give his or her talent. A company like Sky uh, requires many different types of talents. If we want to uh, diversify our business model, actually we basically do three things. So we do television, we provide content, ours is a technological platform, we innovate, we do innovation in that area, then we do sales and marketing, um, carry out very complicated sales and marketing operations, and we have uh, many different talents. So we focus on content creation, so creativity, in the strictest term, most of the people who work on content in Sky, at Sky, is not actually uh, people uh, who invent new formats. Uh, we'd better not do that. Actually, today it is very rare to start from that. In fact, those who work in television is to constantly look for details, uh, innovation, lies in the creation of new ideas as well as in uh, constantly and daily improving uh, our program like for example Sky Sport which at any season starts from scratch because each and every year we try and be better than we were in the past whenever content with ourselves. So there is technological innovation, uh, high um, resolution 3D, home demand, or the capacity of actually following programs from uh, where they actually started. This requires talented people. There are people who find the uh, brand new original ideas as well as those who are capable of uh, open their eyes, get a, good, get a good idea and adapt it to Italy. Then there's a third topic which is very important probably less visible, which consists in innovation uh, and the discovery of talents uh, uh, of all the people who work uh, uh, in the television world. There are m thousands of people who work at Sky in that context, uh, and they constantly innovate. Uh, they are great innovators. Uh, that's probably the less... Uh, in the eyes of many people, the, the least noble work of all. But this is not the case. Our customer service department, for example, is digital first. So we've recently hired young guys who are uh, capable of looking at experience as in digital natives and not as people who only pick up the phone and then solve the problem of a customer. I think this has to be framed by 
the purpose of the company. This is the very first thing that we want to give uh, uh, to a new employee when we hire him. So, uh, making reference to what you've just said, I have another question. How do you uh, select and develop your company? What elements do you search for in hiring a person in order for that person to grow in the company? What do you ask them? So, first thing we ask for is motivation. Motivation passion, interest, personal interest, and uh, checking whether personal interest is in line with business corporate interest, whether there is some kind of overlapping when it comes to design, sports, uh, technology, or innovation, or uh, carrying out international activities. These are all elements which we are looking for. And then the approach. The first thing I'm interested in is uh, actually uh, curiosity. I'm looking for curious employees. So the parameter through which we assess the emotional intelligence of a person is curiosity. People have to be curious to learn, to explore, to investigate, to understand, to, to know. If a person has the right approach, then anything can happen. I think that one can become lucky. One isn't born lucky. One can become lucky if talent, the talent we were talking about before, if talent meets the occasion, the right occasion. But if you're not curious, if you're not willing to explore, well, occasions uh, are reduced in number and this exponentially. And if talent is not trained, well, unfortunately, uh, that talents get reduced. So uh, sometimes you uh, hear people say that some other people are fortunate. Actually, I did a lot of things, uh, and uh, for uh, statistical uh, reasons, uh, at least some of these things had to be fortunate. So this means also working, working hard, but working hard and having fun at the same time. So working means uh, uh, the nobility of work because work is noble. And this means that we are willing to be part of a project that can in a way uh, leave uh, a sign, leave a mark, a landmark, for example, for your country or when it comes to technological innovations, etc. Uh, you may, for example, file an application for a patent. If you are a sales director, uh, that might, uh, for example, imply uh, selling sports machinery, let's say, to the White House. Or if you are a financial employee, that might mean finalizing a takeover operation which uh, succeeds, which is successful. So you can succeed in all these things, but only provided that you are curious. In jobs interviews, there are very few things that we're looking at. It's not the title that matters. It's not the type of degree that you have achieved that matters. Most of the times, if you achieve the degree or have attended the master course, so well, that's fine, but you only start from there. That's the starting point and not the ending point. Sometimes we, may, we make mistakes in choosing people. Uh, if I am asked what the most difficult thing is for a manager, well, mm, I think that's uh, the recruitment of people. But if you find, if you identify the right people in the right place at the right moment, that makes the difference. So if you find the right person and you happen to place that person in the right position, that's half of the job. Any other people? 
actually, unfortunately, the Prime Minister, Mr. Renzi, is not here, otherwise I would have told him. But people are influenced by the culture of their area and their country. So, uh, technology exports over 90% of our work uh, to the world. And we cannot compete with a culture based uh, on what is perceived of Italy. Most of the times, uh, people think that all around the world they may find uh, the same situation that they have in Italy. And in fact, this is not the case. The universities, the digital world students uh, are different. The competition level is very different than the Italian one. So talent here also depends on who your counterpart is. If you have someone who works at Technogym, and if that person is content with the fact that they can have an exchange with their colleague from Cesena who do not travel, who are only focused on their local reality, they might be happy, but they are very short-sighted. But if I tell my secretary that actually I normally tend to, sell, to tell my secretary that she has to be the best secretary in the world and the best, for example, warehouse assistant in the world. So the very fact that they do not work as a CEO of the company doesn't mean that their self-esteem and self-satisfaction cannot be found in their daily activities. They need to have their motivation. And when they work as sales assistants or warehouse assistants, uh, exactly as happened when I was young and I worked on the beach and I wanted to be the best beach resort assistant of the uh, Roman life, the best lifeguard of the uh, Romagna Riviera. I wanted to be the best. I wanted to be much better, or for example, when I used to work as a bartender, I wanted to be much, much better than my colleague as bartender. You shouldn't, one shouldn't be frustrated because what you are doing, uh, uh, you're doing that as an answer, from an unsatisfactory position because you are thinking of the future. One has to pursue, not success per se, but rather the result the objective. So this is all of a matter of approach. And this is something which has to be understood immediately in a job interview. The success of a person in a company, and the company is successful only if its employees are individually successful, depends on their approach. And many countries, many uh, competitive cultures in the world can help in this respect from because in these countries universities and the culture of the country express the wish to in a way uh, be proud of their country and this is what we lack in Italy we lack our flag everybody talks badly of uh, Italy. For example, as regards the Expo, the International Exhibition in Milan, it appears to me that everybody keeps on telling bad things about the Expo. We uh, are, as Technogym, are the best suppliers of uh, Technogym, and actually we keep on defending that. It's impossible that you have a country and that country is doing its best so that one of its own investments goes bust. So this is known to everybody, but every day you hear people talking in bad terms of our people, of our products of Italy. So we run the risk that the worst competitors of Italy are Italians themselves. Like, for example, when you have the Germans who have fun in seeing us arguing and quarreling. They had an exchange rate of the euros against the Deutsche Mark, which was very favorable. They bought themselves Europe without even winning a war. And we found ourselves with a, com a competitive disadvantage, thanks to which the Germans uh, were able to be more competitive. And they sold machines to the whole of the world to pay for the integration of Eastern Germany. So. The idea is that it is the country that matters. Individuals, entrepreneurs must also uh, deal with uh, the global world and not their own local reference world. So my uh, statement to all young people is not to look at uh, 
uh, England or uh, America, uh, they should think uh, of, for example, Vietnam or Indonesia, so countries which might be neglected today, which, however, correspond to the China of 20 years ago or America. There are lots of countries in which you have, you find great opportunities. They should also, they should all do opportunities. They should go abroad, but the most important thing, they should come back. So this is what I'm always telling uh, managers working in international companies. They should make their own experience in international, multinational uh, corporations in America, but then they should come back in Italy. And the same applies to technology. For technology, corporate social responsibility is particularly important. That's yet another uh, important thing for talents. We launched uh, this wellness initiative on uh, in the world. We launched, we created the Wellness Valley in, uh, in the Romania region because we wanted to create a project helping people live better, helping entrepreneurs, hospitals, or sportsmen to be more productive, to be more creative and happier. Because it's uh, better for everybody if you feel well. Uh, it's, it's convenient and practical for the state uh, because it costs less and also for companies and people. So talent, human resources, what will the new technologies or technology of the future uh, be after the green economy? after the digital economy. So the green economy yesterday, today we have the digital economy. What comes next? We are true that that will consist in the wellness economy. The real new economy of the future, at least from my viewpoint, will be creativity, the creativity of people. And this to an increasingly large extent. We will come back to our roots. We will come back to men first. It will not be PCs or the web or applications, the one who will uh, win over competition. It will not be information. We have far too much information. The future will lie in the capability of analyzing data, big data, data analytics. So man, the capacity of producing algorithms and be creative in making a difference, all the rest, that digital world which is so fascinating for us at the moment will only be a means. And that's why we talk about the wellness economy. That's why uh, we were born to uh, be in motion. That's why men should be set in motion. If uh, people are on the move, they're more productive and creative. We're not, we were not born to eat, but rather we were born to be in motion. Actually, today it's the uh, other way around. We eat too much and then we have to move to get rid of the fat that we accumulated. All these elements have to be taken into account in a world which is today at risk. So sustainability is an issue. What will the sustainability be? Sustainability will uh, occur only if we adopt healthier lifestyles. And social models and companies will make the difference. So company, uh, Italy has uh, an extraordinary opportunity because uh, it is in our culture that we have meant sana in corpore sano. Italy can become the biggest producer of well-being in the world. The Italian lifestyle, quality of life, art, culture, design, fashion, and Expo, so food, Expo is the biggest display case that Italy has ever had over the last few years in the world. So we should have positive repercussions uh, in uh, Italy uh, in order to attract talents, investments, tourists, and many other beautiful things. Okay, the point was how can we find talents? But uh, I totally agree with uh, 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 Nerio because I do share uh, his vision of wellness. Uh, 
we would like people to uh, move a lot, uh, to do a lot of exercise, but uh, uh, when they watch television, uh, they can uh, also benefit from the television that they watch and do some mental wellness, so to speak, and therefore they can uh, watch the contents when they want, where they want, and we want to provide as wide an offer cho uh, choice as possible. So the problem of talent is a, a problem uh, where no companies have reached their objectives. Uh, all companies uh, have uh, a talent management problem. No company has found a solution. Everyone, every company has targets shared by uh, the top management, get the talents that they need, get the right talents at the right time, at, uh, whatever, they, whatever they need them at different steps of the company, but no company has ever managed to do so uh, on a permanent basis. Maybe there's a magical moment where the company can have uh, a dream team, but then uh, retain the dream team is yet another problem, and uh, uh, keep the dream team uh, motivated, because uh, uh, companies have, in any case, uh, a uh, uh, mortality as in they uh, will die sooner or later because they have to drive change, otherwise uh, they are killed by change. Uh, many companies, wonderful companies, uh, uh, today have disappeared. So companies like ours uh, always have to think about what is next and uh, uh, always to think about the future, what we need to invent, uh, what strategies we need to change in order to continue, uh, uh, continue winning on the market. So we need to find, discover, and cultivate the talents uh, uh, in our companies. Uh, many of us are looking for the same things. Today, more than ever, uh, we want to have uh, people uh, that are prone to change. Uh, change is uh, enormously fast, and there's a lot of resistance in our country. Italy is a wonderful country, but it's still conservative, and there is uh, in tremendous resistance to change. Today, we need people who are uh, really willing during their career and during their life uh, to take on new challenges. So they uh, shouldn't want to uh, have the same job for uh, too long a time. Then uh, there are uh, people who uh, perceive obstacles not as a fence and not as something blocking them but as obstacles that must be overcome as soon as possible this type of attitude is fundamental saying the same can be said uh, for uh, people who can uh, uh, lead to a marginal gain as in Uh, in some, uh, oftentimes, uh, um, radical changes uh, cannot occur too quickly. Uh, talents leave off marginal gains. Uh, they leave off uh, their uh, ability to give 100%. Uh, we, all uh, work to refine our tools uh, day by day. Hence, training is of the utmost importance. Sky uh, is very varied, uh, has a logical framework, it has uh, efficient programs, we stimulate, we focus on cross-experience. We have uh, uh, programs for new talents that uh, get into the company and cover different positions uh, inside the company before deciding about their career. And we're uh, starting to stimulate uh, the talent uh, culture. Uh, uh, in uh, Moto3, for example, we have created a team uh, in order to help the next Valentino Rossi, so to speak. Uh, in, so we took Italian uh, uh, young people, young talents, uh, uh, to help Valentino Rossi. But this is an internal example uh, to show that we want to train people and build up talents. Uh, and we will launch a program next year 
uh, for uh, uh, um, young uh, students of a comprehensive school and high schools. It's going to be called the Sky Academy in order to uh, um, uh, discover all the uh, new jobs, the new television jobs, uh, which today are unknown. Oftentimes, uh, students I have to decide about their future jobs uh, without having the opportunity to understand that, for example, uh, when there is a television broadcast, uh, there is uh, many different jobs around it. To conclude, I will talk about pride. Nevio already mentioned it. Undoubtedly, the people who can be talented and can have success in a company are have a driver, have uh, some internal force in them. And this is fundamental. This is what guides us every day and what makes us every day go back to work, knowing why we are there and why we want to do that. Uh, Sky is trying to do something on that. We are very proud of the role that we play in the country, and we have a concept of uh, accountability. Uh, we are accountable to our customers, to our employees, to our co-workers, colleagues, customers, uh, and to the country where we operate. That enables us to uh, provide directly and indirectly talent. Just uh, think of a Sky Arte. Uh, a sky uh, uh, arte uh, is not so crucial for us, uh, it's not that critical uh, to increase profits of our company, but it is absolutely fundamental and vital uh, to establish the role played by uh, Sky uh, in Italy as an engine for growth. This is why we are the first media company by size in Italy, which is made by uh, those Italians who are, who are very passionate about what they do in their everyday job. Passion and love that can hardly be found in, in, the, in an interview, in a job interview, but we try to convey this passion and this love to them when they come and work for us. Thank you. Third question, which is related to uh, the talents. So formal education and uh, corporate education. We always talk about the difference between uh, Italy and other countries. We say that Italy does not invest in education and university. But what about training in your companies? Uh, 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 is it important for you uh, to, have, uh, tra to have people who are well trained in schools and university or do you do training yourself in your company? Well, training for the sake of uh, 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 training uh, is not uh, uh, very important. And uh, just 5% of training for the sake of training is left in the minds of people, although it's useful to some extent. But what is absolutely vital to us uh, is to have uh, hands-on experience, as in, Um, letting people work uh, with uh, people who have uh, ha already had the same experience. We believe in uh, open innovation, innovation in terms of startups. So training means job rotation. Training means uh, uh, working in uh, different roles, different positions, different countries, as in uh, working as a team. If you do the same job for all your life, uh, you can have as much training as you want, but uh, uh, you'll never be successful. You need this continuity, which means uh, doing something else, maybe doing something opposite of what you were doing beforehand. Maybe uh, people work as a technicians in research and development, and maybe uh, uh, they uh, uh, um, um, uh, think that uh, um, uh, people on sales, uh, sales people, sales forces, sales forces uh, are not doing a good job, but then they are kindly invited to go and sell the products in order to understand how um, they should sell the products and uh, how sellers could better do it. So it is a multidisciplinary approach. 
based on two principles process, as in process skills, no, uh, getting to know uh, the process, uh, and on the other hand, uh, a cross-cutting uh, training on specific skills, uh, as in uh, uh, speaking English uh, or project management, uh, and so on and so forth. Training is vital for us. We set up a school, we have a corporate university, we set it up uh, 15 years ago. Uh, we provide training to uh, employees and uh, uh, co-workers. Uh, we provide more training abroad than in Italy. So we uh, provide training, uh, especially to branches. And the training have, uh, has a specific curricula. Also to get to know people, to get to know employees. But training must be made on field, on the field, out of curiosity. Um, uh, you have to do training with uh, uh, friends, uh, uh, with uh, uh, people uh, uh, you know. You have to compare your, what you do with what other people do. Training is curiosity, is uh, being thirsty for something new, for new discoveries. Training is not just uh, going to school and uh, being in the classroom. This is uh, an old-fashioned style. Uh, today, there's also digital training, therefore, uh, digi digital platforms which are uh, uh, faster. There are uh, 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 systems to compare experiences. So, uh, uh, gurus, for example, are uh, give, uh, give presentations to explain what they do. Um, on-field experience is of the utmost importance. If you want to learn how to serve a client, uh, you have to go and uh, work as a waiter. Uh, for example, our managers uh, are taken to production lines, uh, to suppliers, because they have to go and see what really happens. They have to see uh, uh, what an installation is like. They have to understand on-field uh, the things that happen. So it's more of an Anglo-Saxon approach, a more pragmatic approach, and we believe a lot in that. Still, you must have passion for what you do. You must be passionate. So first and foremost, you must be uh, users. You must uh, uh, use the tools. If you uh, work in a car company and you don't like cars, it's going to be hard for you. If you work in Techno Gym, which is a sports company based on physical exercise and fitness, and you don't like fitness, then it's going to be hard for you. And that applies to all sectors. And also to Sky, for example. If you don't like entertainment, culture, if you don't like um, uh, communication, it's going to be hard for you uh, to work in Sky and to reach results while working there. So, uh, people have a tremendous potential, much higher than they think. The real problem is to find a way to uh, exploit their potential and open up their passion and uh, uh, open up their ambitions and uh, live their ambitions. As in, it is important to uh, uh, always be uh, looking for something new and uh, uh, comparing with others. Change is something that people don't like. Why? Because, first of all, you have to take on risks when you change. And change is a risk in itself. Uh, even changing your life, changing your lifestyle, uh, but change is hard. Changing is hard. It implies uh, some sacrifice. So if something works, if something is successful, it means that it's all fashion. It's obsolete. So if you start changing when things start going bad, it's too late. So if you want to be a pioneer, if you want to anticipate, and uh, uh, if you always want to be successful in your job, in your life, with your family, the important thing is to change on a permanent basis. Changing is 
good because it means questioning yourself. So if change is positive for you, it's going to be an opportunity for you. If you see that change is negative, then it's going to be a constraint for you. I believe that Italy has tremendous opportunities. I believe in uh, our company and uh, um, we, we are uh, showing that. Although, even if uh, um, it's uh, very hard to uh, 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 compete in Italy and always to be uh, the forerunners of competition, So training, if it's hard training, can be a, trem a tremendous investment in the long run. There are tremendous opportunities on that. Uh, so think big, because you have to think big and you have to dream. Well, as regards uh, training, uh, internal and external training. Clearly, uh, solutions are all ad hoc solutions, custom made solutions. In other words, companies can each and any time, uh, each and any time, have the possibility of deciding whether they want to rely on individuals which are more in line uh, with their needs. So, to answer this question, I might say that each and any time you want to, to fix in a rigid structure this type of management, you are normally bound to fail. Organizational studies and theories are, in my opinion, obsolete. They're outdated today. And this is something that I say to my collaborators as well. They actually keep on complaining that organization charts are sometimes uh, uh, too rapidly evolving. To me, that is not the case, because to me, they, they, they should change every day. Professional profiles and training based on professional profiles are already outdated because the world is so rapidly evolving that you have to modify not only the way in which things are done, but also the organization you have put in place to reach it. So the setting up of very quick teams, uh, the way in which work is organized and has become more important than in the past. From the point of view of a company, it is fundamental to have a clear vision, a clear strategy, clear plans, and at the same time to be very capable in finding talent and provide the best teamwork possible to win. And training has to be very pragmatic. Uh, change is so rapid today that we need to have to be pragmatic in finding a clear strategy and a clear vision. I have one last question, one last quick question. Do you have a dream that still has to be fulfilled? Well, actually, uh, to me, every day is the first day. I've come back from my holidays last Monday. Well, in the past, I used to use paper, and my wife always complained because I was always taking notes. And now I'm doing this because I have my smartphone, it's full of notes. The idea is that I would like to do much more of what I do. This can be done, and this is an extraordinary occasion and opportunity to help our country and businesses. I strongly believe in social, in corporate social responsibility. Businesses are, so to say, the heritage of mankind in a company be it a company with many shareholders or a few shareholders, but that's a, a context in which, uh, through which wealth is created for their suppliers, for the taxes they pay, for their customers. And so um, I would like to thank all those who believe in technology uh, for this. First and foremost, our collaborators. I think it is a 
privilege to be able to contribute for Italy to be known in the world and that our products are uh, appreciated in many countries. In our countries, in, hun uh, in our case, in 100 countries, we have about 45,000 people, 65,000 people doing physical exercise every day. And the fact that there are athletes who have to undergo rehabilitation or people who want to stay fit in top locations find a product manufactured in Cesena is a privilege, an enormous privilege. So what my dream goes on and my dream consists in, be, in acting as the advisors of the state of the states who might have problems. For example, in the Middle East, I know that diabetes has now is now affecting 23% of the population. In some countries, uh, the obesity rate is very high. So the fact that Technogym can support institutions to try and solve problems like this is a real dream. And we also uh, we would also like to serve as consultants, as advisors of companies wishing to work on well-being programs for their employees. We've always we always like to say that the body is a sanctuary, so to say, of the soul. A lively mind cannot be in a in an ill body, cannot reside in an ill body, and we want to act as the advisors of people in when it comes to their lifestyle. As regards uh, technology, Technogem is Apple-like. We want to be the Apple company of uh, uh, gym machinery. Uh, you may want to download the app that uh, we created for the Expo. Let's, uh, uh, that's an app that can be downloaded into your smartphones. Uh, we signed an agreement with uh, the organization uh, of the World Food Program, the UN agency who is in charge of providing food to uh, children who have nutrition problems, you move and with this app you burn calories and these calories can be donated and our company will finance the meals. And in a couple of months, just three months, in just three months we already uh, collected over 350,000 donated meals. So this was an idea. The idea that, for example, you have a, an, an app, you have a smartphone, you can download the Technogym app and can contribute to meals uh, uh, to hungry children all over the world. This is something that I uh, did, was not envisaging uh, years ago when I started. So we can do it. And if this is the case, if we can do it, why shouldn't we dream further? But of course, it, it takes a lot of work. Uh, nothing is for free. Thank you. Um, I think that I do the most beautiful job in the world, so I'm somewhat privileged. Just like many of my colleagues, we're lucky enough to work in a wonderful company, wonderful business which is creative, innovative, uh, always uh, changing. Every day we can have an impact and influence houses. We are hosted by our customers. We enter their houses and uh, we provide them uh, with uh, entertainment. They get angry with us if uh, their uh, uh, love, uh, love, beloved uh, uh, football team is losing. We're not a neutral product. And many people are speaking about us. We have a lot of interaction with our customers and our interactions are not neutral. Even when they're happy, even when they are passionate, uh, we have a strong relations with with them, even because we touch upon the emotional life of our customers. So think we have a lot of dreams and we continue developing dreams um, and ambitions at the same time. If I had to choose one dream among them, I would choose a feasible one, which is also an ambitious one. We've only scratched the surface of the enormous uh, uh, audiovisual creativity of Italy. 
Sky has launched uh, a couple of projects uh, which uh, uh, were exported worldwide very successfully. We have a, 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 an incredible pipeline of new TV productions and I think that Italy can uh, uh, Sky Italia can uh, help uh, create a new major uh, on television, just like the Americans uh, have done um, and did when I was a kid. I think that Sky can become one of the majors, uh, can become a, uh, a, a European company, a worldwide company of creativity and TV productions. We uh, uh, underestimate ourselves. Today we have uh, productions that are up to American productions. That was not the case in the past because we didn't want them to be that way because we thought that being Italian was a constraint, was a limit. In two weeks, Channel 4 uh, in, Great Britain, in Great Britain will put a, uh, a German uh, um, uh, TV series uh, subtitled um, in prime time. Gomorra was uh, subtitled and uh, was broadcasted in 100 countries of the world. It's not true that Italian is a constraint, is a limit. It's the limit for the way we perceive it. We are the limit of ourselves. If we release our ambitions and our dreams, uh, and if we go beyond that, that would do something practical, uh, something feasible, and if we add the right resources in terms of human financial resources, uh, and we just don't stop to the dream in itself. I like having dreams that can come true and that become true. So we're thinking big and we are also creating a big structure, a big framework. Sky uh, uh, Italia is part and parcel of a uh, Sky Europe, which is even bigger, which has a lot of assets, resources, and it is searching for big talents and innovations, uh, thinking um, along the lines of Italian creativity, and we uh, do believe that uh, our dream can come true. Now, this is the end of the meeting, and so maybe uh, I could say that uh, uh, the title was somewhat partial, not just talent and human capital, but we should have added the word genius. Genius meaning not something magic, but uh, uh, something that is at the heart of uh, 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 the uh, uh, human uh, uh, life, uh, uh, being willing to create, being willing to uh, do something new, to uh, uh, show genius. We need talents, we need human capital, but uh, what we've heard tonight uh, uh, from the two speakers uh, is something related to genius. Genius, which is at the heart uh, of uh, doing business. Uh, as we spoke about uh, Ibrahim, somebody uh, who is born out of something, a corporate genius is born out of something which is unexpected and not uh, uh, foreseeable because uh, it is not foreseeable that a company uh, like the one of like Technogym that uh, was set up in a garage can then be exported worldwide and it is not uh, 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 foreseeable that uh, a company like Sky Italia um, can uh, penetrate uh, the TV market uh, that was dominated by uh, uh, state television and by private television. That was not thinkable. So, genius is the unexpected, uh, the uh, uh, unforeseen event which uh, bring about something new. Tonight, in the description of the company and in the description of the choice of staff and in training, I was struck by the fact that we think outside the box, you think outside the box. If you think in the box, uh, then you lack oxygen, but you need to continue creating, generating. You have to wake up in the morning and uh, have something new in mind. You have to take on the challenge with uh, uh, many different countries. This is a type of a company which is a somewhat different. Uh, 
from the companies we used to have 20 and 30 years ago, as in uh, uh, stereotyped uh, uh, companies uh, thinking in the box. This is the result of uh, human creativity, uh, which has to be uh, reviewed. When talking about the Italian crisis, in order to overcome the crisis, you have to think about the unexpected event uh, rather than thinking in the box. We have to look at corporate uh, case studies and to learn why some companies can work and some companies can work cannot work. I believe that uh, in Italy, there are companies uh, that are extremely successful and some others uh, that are not in the same sectors. So why is that the case? Why some are successful and some are not? Why uh, uh, this, some companies have totally different results? I'll give you just an example in Milan, because I've, I'm from Milan. In uh, 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 Milan suburbs, uh, there are old uh, company warehouses uh, and the old companies which have been uh, dismissed, uh, like Pirelli and uh, Alfa Romeo and many others. So it should be... Milan is not uh, 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 collapsing, so uh, where are how how do uh, new entrepreneurs uh, um, uh, develop? Nobody has ever managed to understand what is happening in Milan. But um, where are now all the people that used to work in uh, uh, big companies? And in Milan. Uh, universities uh, have developed in the last 20 years. It is important to see that, that there's uh, something uh, new uh, in Milan, which was not expected. And uh, it's a new trend that we have to follow. Uh, what are the results of the meeting, I was asked by Navio beforehand. Well, maybe the fact that uh, we need to look at what is happening around uh, in order to understand what's happening and to go on, as in to think uh, outside the box. I do totally agree with you and uh, to follow up what you said, uh, in the future, uh, the most important thing will not be able to uh, uh, read and write, but rather to learn and to unlearn. So this is a perfect conclusion. Thank you.